Hello, my name is Bo Simonson, and I am the Technical Product Manager for Blackfire IO. In this session, you'll get a high-level overview of Blackfire's testing and automated testing capabilities and features. Blackfire believes that good performance starts with good code. Good performance starts with good code because good code performs better. And the way that you can ensure that you have good code is usually by doing some testing. Testing is something that is uh, growing more popular over the years. Um, it wasn't always true, especially in the PHP world, but definitely over the last 10 years or so, uh, P, uh, testing has become very important for PHP applications. Blackfire was actually originally created by Sensio Labs, the creator of the Symfony PHP framework. Um, in that time, they have discovered that um, it's much more expensive to solve problems in production than it is in development. Uh, it takes more time to get a fix. Uh, it impacts the entire team's workflow. And if it impacts the customers, it could actually be impacting your business. The whole idea behind testing is to never let a feature go live untested. And the reason is because you never know if the feature is actually working the way uh, you intend it to unless you actually are testing it. Uh, there's several types of testing that are common. Uh, unit testing looks at code at a very, uh, very fine level, looking to make sure that individual pieces of code are operating the way that you expect. There's also integration testing that starts to look at these pieces and having them work together to make sure that they're working together correctly. There's also functional testing and end-to-end -end testing. These are sort of higher level testing that look at an application as it's actually running uh, to make sure that all of the pieces are working together um, in the way that they're combined into the application. It can often be a, a lot of extra work and uh, somewhat monotonous to have to continue to test code as you write it. Uh, so something that's become very popular is the idea of continuous integration, um, sometimes paired with continuous delivery. Uh, the idea here is that as you make changes to the code and push it into um, whatever your uh, source control uh, system is, uh, it'll actually run the, the code to make sure that, uh, or it'll actually run your unit tests your integration tests and any functional tests you have uh, to ensure that the code that you've just committed doesn't break something on the test. Uh, so this allows developers not to not have to worry uh, about doing all of the unit testing every time, uh, to run all of the full integration tests every time. Uh, this allows them to focus on their work, still take it, uh, still get advantage from the testing, but not having to require them to um, actually run the, the testing code themselves all the time. Certain industries have very well-known metrics for uh, when uh, performance matters. Uh, for example, in the e-commerce sector, uh, it's very well known that any delay in the checkout time uh, increases the amount of time, or increases the uh, abandonment rate of those cards by up to 30% uh, with just a two second delay. So how do you actually know if your application that you're deploying is now going to be two seconds longer than it was before? Or how do you know that you can't take your two second cart um, and drop it down to one second or 500 milliseconds? Uh, and the problem with that is that most developers don't actually have the proper tools in order to be able to test this. If we look at this whole um, problem as performance as a feature rather than a bug, things become a little more interesting because now we can start looking at performance testing uh, the same way that you would from the perspective of um, more like feature testing or uh, user acceptance testing. Uh, we can actually take the, this idea of performance as a feature and start testing that feature. And the problem that comes up is that you cannot really optimize um, in, your, in your performance tests, um, and you can't really find problems if you can't measure the performance of your code. And that's where Blackfire comes in. At its core, Blackfire is a profiler. Uh, profiling is a uh, way to measure resource consumption. And uh, the way that Blackfire does it is it measures resource consumption all the way at the function level. Uh, it gives you high level insight into um, the overall look of your application in terms of performance, uh, but it also has very fine grain controls down to the function level so you can see where your resources are being spent. Uh, the main dimensions that Blackfire supports 
um, are time dimensions. So we have total time, we have IO weight, and we have CPU time. So you're able to look and see how long certain functions or the whole um, application is running uh, from uh, different aspects of time. We can also measure memory consumption. Uh, so if you're looking for memory leaks or if you're uh, trying to make sure that your um, um, application is consuming less memory because you're maybe in an environment where memory is a problem or a concern, uh, this can help you figure those things out. And we can also measure network traffic as well. So to see Blackfire in action, we're gonna take a look at a uh, application that's running. Uh, this is a Magento application. And there's a little Blackfire icon in the corner there, and that is our Blackfire Chrome Companion. Uh, this is an extension that you can install from the Chrome store. Uh, we also have a Firefox version of this as well. And what this is going to do when I click the big red profile button is it's going to profile the URL in the URL bar. Um, we're gonna get a little bit of overhead, uh, overview of what's happening, and then we get some high level stats afterwards. And then we're gonna jump into the call graph by clicking the view call graph button. Um, the, we're not gonna look at this in too much detail right now, but just to give you an idea of what's here, uh, we have a function list on the left-hand side. You can see the number of times certain functions are called. Um, if you were to click on those, you'd get more details about um, which, uh, like how much time those functions were taking, how much memory they consumed, um, those sorts of things. And then on the right-hand side, there's a call graph showing you the relationship between the functions and which functions are calling which other functions and how many times. Um, this, call, this entire um, call graph view um, can be switched to different dimensions. So this is the total time dimension. Uh, we also have a uh, IO weight dimension. So this shows you the, the functions that are more uh, IO bound. Uh, there's a CPU time, which shows you which functions are more CPU bound. Uh, there's memory consumption, so you can see where most of the memory is being consumed within your application. Uh, we also have a network view, so you can see which things are uh, consuming network traffic. Um, in this case, we're talking to a Redis server um, in this particular request, so we see a lot of calls to Redis. Um, if there were database calls or third-party API calls over HTTP, uh, you would see those here as well. We have an HTTP request viewer, which isn't terribly interesting for this example, uh, but if you're making third-party API calls um, or if you're doing uh, internal microservices or things along those lines, you would see those requests here and you'd be able to see how much time was spent waiting for them and how much network traffic um, was attributed to them. We also have a SQL view uh, that gives you uh, just a high-level overview of the SQL queries that were executed behind the scenes. Um, you can see how much time was spent waiting and the number of times they were called. So as a tool, uh, the profiler gives you um, a lot of insight into the application. Um, if you want to learn more about this, we have a Getting Started with Blackfire webinar that shows you um, more details about how the actual profiler looks and works. Uh, there are several ways to actually create profiles with Blackfire. Um, Similar to the uh, Chrome Companion that we just looked at, this is an example of using Blackfire curl to specify a URL that you want to profile. Uh, you get the same sort of behavior, you get a little bit of a progress meter, um, and then at the end you end up with the overview values showing you the, the time that is being um, spent, the memory that's consumed, and the SQL queries. Um, you also get a couple of URLs that show you um, that will uh, launch you directly into the graph view or the call graph view uh, for the profile created by this curl request. One of the other uh, things that will often come up is people want to know how to do AJAX requests. Um, if you're just doing a GET request, that's not terribly interesting. Uh, a lot of people might be running um, like single page applications and things along those lines. Uh, one of the ways that you can do that is to open the developer tools go to the network tab, find the request that you actually want to profile, um, then you could right click on it, go to copy and copy as curl. And then you can paste that directly into the Blackfire command, so it becomes Blackfire curl, and then it sends all of the other information along um, that had been sent for the original request that you were copying. Uh, for example, we can see that it's gonna send the right header, for the user agent, uh, the accept headers are gonna be the same. Uh, this, this is useful in, in cases where you have applications that might uh, respond differently depending on the, the accept header you send. Um, same thing with cache control and cookies. So if there's a cookie related information that is important here, uh, either preferences or authentication or something along those lines, 
Um, this will make sure that the, the request that you're profiling is as close as possible to the original request that um, you made using the browser. You can also uh, profile command line applications. So for example, if we want to profile uh, running Composer install, uh, we can run Blackfire run Composer install. Uh, so it's the same exact command that you would run just with Blackfire run in front of it. Um, and it's gonna run things as it would normally. Uh, you'd get the output like you would expect. Uh, the only difference is that after the end, it says Blackfire run completed. It gives you a graph URL so that you can go in and look at the profile created from this command line application. Um, and then it gives you the high level stats again as well. So you can use this um, tool to generate uh, profiles in a lot of different situations in a lot of different cases. Where Blackfire really adds value on top of just being a, a profiler um, is by being able to create performance tests. Um, tests are based on metrics uh, for Blackfire. Uh, metrics are things like the number of calls to a specific set of functions. Developers can use Blackfire's built-in metrics for a wide variety of supported libraries or frameworks, such as Symfony, Laravel, Magento, Drupal, Easy Platform, Typo3, or WordPress. Uh, they can also create their own metrics based on their code and their own business logic. So if you want to create your own metrics for um, the actual domain that you're building, um, you can do that for things that are important to you. Blackfire tests show up on the assertions tab. So before we were looking at the functions tab, this shows you the assertions tab. Uh, tests use a, a rich expression language that allows developers to express their uh, requirements or their assertions. Uh, tests can be used for defining pro uh, projects performance thresholds, um, it can use, be used to test code's behavior, and it can ensure that there are no performance regressions. Tests uh, are written in a blackfire.yaml file, um, and there's a top-level test key, uh, there's the name of the test, and then there are the, uh, the, the, in the case of web requests, it's a path match, so you can specify which paths uh, should uh, match the test that you're writing, and then you can write the assertions for your specific test. Uh, so for example, this first one, pages should be fast enough. Uh, we can say that main wall time should be less than 800 milliseconds. Uh, so this is a lot like writing like a unit test, except you're writing it for performance things. Uh, one thing to, to mention on here, um, time is probably not the most stable metric to use. Um, as most people realize, um, Timing is, can be very different between development and staging and production. Um, it's usually a good way to start uh, just to make some uh, high level uh, baseline thresholds like, you know what, this page really shouldn't take longer than a second to run no matter where it is. Um, but very quickly, I think it will make sense for people to um, advance their testing capabilities to go to more meaningful things and things that are more stable. Uh, things like total number of SQL queries, uh, things like total of, uh, number of times uh, a certain function is called or not called, uh, those sorts of things. So the defaults and most of our documentation even talks about wall time um, and timing things. But again, uh, keep in mind that um, eventually you're going to want to move beyond uh, using time as a, a test to something that's a little more stable. Um, and what that is uh, highly depends on the code that you're actually writing. Uh, in addition to performance tests, uh, Blackfire also has capabilities for um, doing performance scenarios. And what performance scenarios are uh, is something that we call a build. Um, and builds are a collection of profiles that are created um, by some sort of automated means. Uh, so for example, here we see a build report 54. Um, we see the checkout page, the home page, and the payout, uh, payment page. And you can see there's a little show profile link on each of those. Um, that allows you to go look at the profile that was created for that particular page or that particular scenario um, for this uh, specific build. These scenarios are defined in a Blackfire YAML file as well. Um, this is where you define a name and then you can define a path. Um, if you look at the path, the path is just a partial path. As you can see from this uh, build report, uh, slash checkout and slash payment and slash index.php. Um, that should just be a slash. Um, you can see that the actual URL that is hit um, is some lengthy string that starts out with PR4. Uh, that's because you're specifying the scenarios to build on a specific target. So this could be production, this could be 
staging. Um, this could be a local development environment, things like that. So um, the scenarios only specify the, the path part. And then when the actual uh, scenario is built, um, it is given the, um, the root endpoint that needs to be used. Uh, we have documentation for this as well. Uh, we have documentation um, for all of the scenarios and it really shows how the scenarios work together also with the, the testing. Uh, so the docs in uh, the Blackfire docs for both writing tests and writing scenarios is pretty comprehensive. To actually run builds, um, we have a builds tab and this is available, I believe for premium and enterprise customers. Um, you'll have the builds tab. So if you don't have uh, a builds tab and you haven't done a premium trial yet, I'd recommend you uh, start a premium trial so that you're able to see um, at least some of these features. Um, the builds, as you can see, are run. Uh, so we can see we, there's various triggers, there's webhook triggers, there's Magento Cloud triggers. Um, one of the things that you can do is enable periodic builds. And this is actually functionality that is included with premium. Um, and you can enable periodic builds to happen um, anywhere from one hour to every 24 hours. And what that will do, uh, mostly in production environments, this is where uh, we would recommend people use this, is it will then have Blackfire in the background create a build against whatever your production environment is. Uh, so you'd be able to run these same scenarios that we were just looking at um, on your production environment to make sure that the, the application is staying within uh, whatever performance thresholds you've set or whatever performance tests you've set. You can also generate a build manually um, if you want to start a new build. Um, this pops up a, uh, a modal that gives you the capability of specifying which endpoint you want to run this build against. Uh, so here you can specify the, the root URL to the, um, or to the application that you actually want to test. Um, this does have to be a publicly accessible URL uh, because Blackfire is going to be making these requests from Blackfire's environment. Uh, so this either needs to be exposed publicly in some way um, or you're not going to be able to use Blackfire's automated build system. Um, you also can specify um, uh, additional information. Uh, so some applications uh, like the staging environments might be behind a firewall. Um, it might actually be behind um, just uh, like an HTTP basic authentication. Um, okay, well, it's not really a firewall, but you're, you're basically protecting the site using HTTP auth. Um, something along those lines, if you have any of those requirements, uh, we do have ways to let you tweak how this build is actually gonna be built. Um, ultimately, what this does is generate a curl command for you so that you can generate the, uh, the request to start a build yourself. Uh, so if you're trying to automate this process, um, say you're using Jenkins or um, something along those lines where you're actually running uh, a system and you want to generate a build on your own, uh, this gives you the tools to know how to generate uh, this build. You can either run that uh, command, that curl command, or you can click the start build button. In both cases, what you'll see is a build starts. Um, you have the capability of canceling the build, uh, but you'll see that it already knows that um, there's three pages that it's gonna hit, the checkout, the home, and the payment page. Um, and it's looking for those and it's still waiting. And those are actually the things that came from our scenarios. So what it's doing behind the scenes is contacting the endpoint that you specified for the build, which gets your Blackfire YAML file using magic. Um, and then it starts uh, creating those tasks. So if we go, go back here now, we can see as things are completed, um, they, they either show red or green, uh, depending on whether they were successful. Um, and you can kind of see as you go that it's generating these profile links for you. So you can actually go in and check out the checkout and home profiles while you're waiting for payment to complete. Uh, when it's all done, uh, you either get um, green or red for the entire build, depending on whether or not any of them failed. So if any scenario fails, the build itself is going to be considered a failure. Uh, if you click into any of these profiles, it's gonna take you straight to the assertions tab uh, so you can see right away how that page performed on this particular build. Uh, we also have a, a more advanced um, way to start creating builds using the Blackfire player. This is actually new, um, new functionality for us. Um, the Blackfire player um, is a, really, it's a crawler. <laughs> it's a web crawler um, that enables web, test, uh, web testing. 
So um, what you can use with Blackfire Player is build some more complex scenarios. So for, for most of our users that are using um, uh, the automated testing, uh, the automated testing works really well out of the box, but there are some people who have more um, lengthy requirements, more in-depth requirements for which Blackfire Player is better suited. Uh, so this is something that you might want to look at if you find the built-in um, testing capabilities of Blackfire, or the built-in automated testing capabilities of Blackfire aren't quite doing what you need. Uh, chances are you'll be able to get that same functionality from Blackfire Player. Uh, the only downside to that is that you would actually have to drive that process. Uh, you would have to have, say, like a Jenkins process uh, or um, any of the other continuous integration platforms would have to actually run Blackfire Player for you. Uh, rather than having Blackfire uh, run those tests for you. But now that we have these, these ideas of uh, writing tests for specific pages and assigning scenarios, uh, we can look a little bit more at automation. Uh, automation is where things start to get really interesting uh, because it starts to happen in the background and it becomes a part of the, the daily process of working with your application. Uh, we have integrations with chat interfaces to help with, the in, um, to help with automation. Uh, we have uh, integration with various VCS systems uh, so that you can do some really interesting stuff either at the, the merge level or actually in the um, actual like pull request or merge request level. And then we also have the capability to do performance testing based on input from other systems um, as well, including webhooks. Webhooks is a way that um, will allow you to integrate into Blackfire's performance automation from pretty much any environment. So if you, if you don't fit into one of the buckets that we have um, already defined with a pre-existing in, um, inter integration, you can definitely use the webhook system to work with whatever you have set up. Um, one of the things that um, makes Blackfire a little different from the traditional unit tests um, that you might be used to if you're running like PHP unit um, is that it, Blackfire really works best if you're running it on actual software. Uh, there's probably a, su a, a subset of like library related code where if you're wanting like a specific algorithm to be running quickly, you could probably um, build that into uh, your pipeline as well. Um, but for the big idea of performance testing, you want to make sure that the running application is performing the way that you expect. Uh, so this can be a little difficult for some teams um, just because uh, actually getting the running system in place isn't always as easy as it sounds. Um, it's also best if the environments that you are uh, running the automation on are as close to production as possible. Um, there is some of the automation you can run on production, um, but if, if it's not in production itself, um, then it should be close uh, to production if you can make it so. Um, and end-to-end -end testing, if you already have end-to-end -end testing, you probably have the capability of uh, doing Blackfire testing already. Um, so if you're already doing like um, uh, tests on like JavaScript uh, applications within your running web application and you're able to authenticate users and um, all of that sort of information is already taken care of, um, you can probably jump into Blackfire out of the box and just point Blackfire at the um, environments that you spin up for end-to-end -end testing. So here I see a question, any integration with Team City? Um, so we don't have any special integration directly with Team City, um, at least not that I'm aware of. I'd have to double check on that. Um, I don't think we have um, a lot of integration a lot of integrations directly built into any of the systems that um, are easy to work with webhooks. Uh, so things like, um, I think I've mentioned Jenkins a few times. We don't have first class support for Jenkins uh, because a lot of people's Jenkins configurations are uh, very hand, they're put together by hand. So finding a one size uh, fits all solution for Jenkins isn't maybe necessarily um, appropriate, uh, but these are things that, you know, if there, if there are um, use cases or situations where one of these systems like Team City would, would make sense to have first class support for Blackfire, that's definitely a, uh, a feature that we could take a look at. So, but off the top of my head, I don't believe we have anything specifically for Team City. Sorry about that. Um, so we're gonna take a look now at uh, sort of like a perfect world 
of how Blackfire can be used to automate testing um, in an environment that supports um, uh, spinning up uh, environments per commit or per pull request. Um, and so we have integration with Magento Cloud. Um, Magento Cloud is a system that um, manages a Magento installation. Um, it has some really great deployment functionality built into it. Um, and uh, has really great integration environment capabilities as well. Essentially, anytime you create a new uh, branch on your uh, VCS, um, it clones the production or the staging environment's database into a, a new environment and then installs the code for that PR or for that branch into that environment so that it makes it really easy to do all sorts of real world testing um, against code on a case-by-case -case basis or, um, or on a branch-by-branch -branch basis. So we're going to simulate the application that we were looking at earlier because it, it was a Magento application. Um, I'm going to push up some code. Uh, so I'm going to push code up to GitHub. Uh, the features that are enabled for this, um, GitHub needed to be configured to talk to Blackfire. So the Blackfire integration uh, or the GitHub integration for Blackfire is used. Uh, Magento Cloud itself needed to be configured to talk to GitHub uh, so that anytime uh, GitHub creates a new branch or does a merge, it sends a notification to Magento Cloud. Um, and then the other piece is that Magento Cloud needs to be told to work with Blackfire. So it's really a three-way uh, conversation that's happening here. So we're going to start out with the GitHub piece. GitHub is going to, be, uh, it's going to figure out that, hey, I bow pushed a new branch up. Uh, so I'm going to click the compare and pull request. I'm going to give it some uh, information that I'm going to create the pull request. Uh, the default behavior for Git is, or GitHub is to uh, give you the, the thumbs up that everything was good to go um, and there's no conflicts. At this point, GitHub notifies Magento Cloud, hey, there's a pull request opened. Uh, pull request, I'm not sure which number this is, um, but it says, hey, there's a pull request opened up. Magento Cloud then says, okay, I'm going to spin up a new environment for this branch and notify GitHub, hey, by the way, I'm going to deploy this code for this branch. So uh, Magento notifies GitHub and GitHub notifies the PR that there's an, uh, an environment being deployed. On the Magento Cloud side, we can actually watch this happen. Uh, we can look and see that it's currently building um, and it's waiting. So it says in progress. Uh, as soon as it's successful, it actually gives me the ability to um, click access the site and I can go look at the PR that's built specifically for this version of code uh, for this PR. At this point, Magento Cloud sends a notification up to GitHub that says, hey, um, we're finished. The, the, the environment has been deployed, yay. Um, at the same time, Magento Cloud tells Blackfire, hey, go build a uh, performance build against this special URL that I just created. Um, and then Blackfire says, oh, okay. Uh, it notices that that build was for a PR, so it notifies GitHub for that PR and says, I'm gonna start profiling. So you can actually see the progress that's being sent to uh, GitHub here that it started profiling it's at zero percent. When it's finished profiling, it tells GitHub either success with a green check or failure with a red X. So this is pretty straight ahead for anybody who's worked with um, other types of CI environments where they're running unit tests or those, uh, those sorts of things. So here we can see that the, the build failed. Um, I can actually click on the details link to get to the build report page for this particular PR. So this is build report 53 for PR for refactoring performance tests. Um, and what I can see um, is that I can go and look at each individual profile and say, okay, well, the first one was good. I, I knew it was good, but I can go look at it anyway if I wanted to. Um, but I can also scroll down and see that, hey, the, the payment page failed. Um, right away, without even going anywhere, um, I can click the constraints to see which things failed. So I can see that the page was just slightly slower than it needed to be. Um, so. I can decide then if I want to actually go in and look at the profile, get the same information, but actually debug the code potentially and find out if there's actually something that's uh, problematic here or if it's uh, a temporary glitch or if I actually need to do some performance refactoring. 
Um, if I decide to make some changes and I push new code up, the process starts over, uh, the PR gets uh, updated, and Magento Cloud starts its new deployment. Uh, here we can see it's still building, but we can still access the, the previous version of this PR. Um, as soon as it's completed, it will um, again tell GitHub, all right, it's deployed, it's in a new, new environment. Um, it notifies Blackfire that there's a change to this PR, profile the, the new URL, um, and then Blackfire notifies GitHub that profiling has started. When it's all successful, you don't even get to see um, all of the information. It just says all the checks have passed, everything's good to go, you can merge the pull request. Uh, if you want to show all checks, uh, you can see that actually Magento Cloud was successful, yay, and Blackfire was successful as well. Clicking into details, you can always look at uh, the information that um, is available for each individual build report uh, so that you can always go back and check to make sure uh, if something was kind of weird at a certain point, you can go in and look to see um, uh, more details on what that page actually looked like. So the really awesome part about this is that you can know before you merge your PR whether or not you're gonna have a performance impact on your code. Uh, so something that um, a lot of teams don't necessarily have access to or the ability to do uh, first, because they don't really know how to uh, measure performance in an automated way, uh, but also be able to trap things and catch things uh, when they start to fall out of line. Those can be super important um, to avoid people from making changes in, you know, like a, a category page where everything is fine and good, but the change they made made the home page five seconds slower. They would never maybe know that without actually manually going to look at the home page and say, "Oh, why is this really slow now?" Um, if you have these sorts of tests built into your um, into your continuous workflow, um, you'll be able to find those sorts of things so that at the PR level, um, it would immediately pop up and say, "Hey, the, the home page took five seconds to load," or "The home page did 500 million SQL queries," um, where you might not have known that before. Um, until it actually went into production, then you had to figure it out. So um, being able to do testing gives you the, the confidence to know uh, that the code that you're actually shipping um, is, is not going to be worse than the code that you had before, which can be a huge thing for people. Um, just feeling better about um, releasing code, lowers stress level, makes everybody's um, work uh, a lot more ple pleasant and more um, useful because you're able to fix things earlier, uh, which is really one of the things that uh, Blackfire likes to um, do. Uh, Blackfire likes to make sure that it's a development tool that can be used in all stages of the application's development lifecycle. Uh, being able to use it in development while you're building code or while you are evaluating and um, refactoring performance related things um, is quite helpful so that you can actually see uh, the changes that you're making as you work on it. Being able to um, do automated uh, performance tests in staging or testing environments also is quite nice. Uh, being able to um, even just be able to do uh, you know, on deployment on testing uh, would be great because you could do right after you merge new code and deploy it to the staging environment, um, you could run the performance test as a part of your, your deploy to staging script and immediately know if anything is looking like it's falling out of line with what your expectations are. And then finally in production. Uh, production, not a lot of, um, are in the, at least in the performance space, are, there aren't a lot of tools that are considered profilers that are safe to put in production. Um, the idea with the production profiling is that it adds overhead uh, to requests that are being profiled. Uh, some profiling tools like say, for example, xDebug, um, add overhead even if they aren't profiling. Now, that's not the case for Blackfire. Blackfire um, built its own uh, proprietary profiling uh, mechanism because they wanted to make sure that it was safe to run in production, uh, both in terms of security, um, in terms of stability and reliability. So we definitely recommend people have Blackfire in production uh, because there's a lot of uh, performance related issues that might pop up in production that you wouldn't find uh, in development. Um, you can often reproduce them in development after you know the problems there in production. So being able to have Blackfire just available in production for times when you run into issues uh, can be a huge help. 
Uh, if you want to learn more about Blackfire and uh, code performance in general, especially for PHP, uh, Blackfire does have a book. Uh, I think we actually have it available online as well to purchase if you want to buy a hard copy now. Uh, we have that available. Uh, so if you're looking for how to get started with Blackfire, um, this takes you all the way from in, uh, creating a user account to um, running some um, basic examples and walking through creating your first profile, reading your first profile, and really understanding uh, what Blackfire is doing. Um, and it really goes into um, greater depth as you go through it as well. Uh, so if you're interested in learning more about Blackfire and want to have a more uh, hands-on approach and actually walk through it yourself, um, I would definitely recommend you check out the book. Um, and also we have uh, other webinars and other sorts of uh, events coming up that you can uh, find on our blog. Um, and also if we have new features and things like that. All right, thank you all very much. Have a great day.